Hey guys, Andy N, Spoken Label, back in the house on a Monday night. Uh, it's been varied today, the weather up in England, because we've had, when I went to work, it was dry. Went out lunchtime, I got drenched. Went out in the afternoon doing errand for work, it was heavy wind. And on the way back home, was bright sunshine. So you can tell we're in September. <laughs> it's been very, very varied. We're across the seas today. And we're catching up with an old friend of ours who a couple of years ago, who the, the wonderful lady here, she and I had a great time chatting to her two years ago, actually, when she bought her, her debut book, The Lines Between Us. And I was just playing the podcast back before, and it was such an interesting book, this one. And I had to went to Rebecca, who's with us today, told me that she's bought another book out. I thought, yes, I'll have to get it back on. And the book's fascinating in a very different way so rebecca we'll let you introduce yourself yeah. to everybody I don't remember you from last time tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll start from there okay um i live in oakland california i'm a retired teacher well the last 13 years i taught uh, english as a second language to adults before that i worked in hospital administration and before that i did graduate work in spanish literature so i kind of been all over the place I, a couple days a week, get to pick up my grandchildren from school, so uh, I'm not a happy camper, really. <laughs> yeah, you've got a good life there, definitely, with that one. So, but should we tell people about, I think we need to recap, first of all, don't we, with your first book? Because, like, your first book from a couple of years ago, like I said, was The Lines Between Us. It really was. It was a fascinating book to read because it was set in Madrid in 1661, with parallel time zones running up to about 300 years in the future. And then, like, it was a really fascinating book because I know you're, I remember you telling me, didn't take that book take about 20 years to write something? I know you had a lot of trouble with it, didn't you? Yes, it did. I started out in, I think, 1994. I quit my then hospital administration job and worked on the book for a while and then thought I... I don't know. I don't know if this is any good. And and at that point, it was much, there, there weren't as many ways to get your book out into the world. So I thought, okay, I have to be productive. So then I got credentialed to teach English as a second language, taught that for 13 years, and then retired so I could babysit my granddaughter and pulled the book out and thought, well, you know, okay, I'm going to work on it some more. So then I worked on it about another three years. So Yeah, it was. So yes, yeah, so it took long time from start to finish <laughs> I, but they always say don't they like um, well, so i want to link this into your second book in a minute but always like you're doing your first book i know my first poetry book was a nightmare and i've already told you already about my, my debut novel show soon that's proved a nightmare but but then like when you get to your second book you, you know, well, i'm not gonna i'm gonna ask you this now then how's your second novel which we're going to talk about now did that prove a much easier book to write you know, it was a much easier book to write. Um, in part, I, as you know, Andy, the, the structure is much more straightforward in this one. Yeah. That one was back and forth and letters and diaries and a lot of different yeah. components. It was like a jigsaw puzzle trying to put it together. This one is basically a story. It starts, it goes through, it finishes. So in that respect, it was easier. Also, you know, um, having had you know, positive reaction from readers with my first book. It gives you more more confidence. And uh and and I have a lot of author friends now and that just I don't know, you you feel kind of part of that community. So yeah, it was a and and also the pub whole, the publishing, I just decided to go with the same publishers I went with the first time. So yes, all in all it was a much easier experience. <laughs> yeah, the book itself is obviously we need to clarify people obviously if people are expecting but this is a great book again. This one's actually set in Amsterdam, in contrast to set in Madrid in the first book. And yes. I know, obviously, from your first book at the time, it was, I think it was a labour of love, really, because I think you, when my memory is correct, you've got, you had a big loving of Madrid, didn't you? So, what I want to know first of all is, and we didn't touch this last time I spoke, the year two you was, what made you want to do this book in Amsterdam then, first of all? Well, I, I wanted to stay in the 17th century because I, I it's an interesting period, I think. And not a lot of people write about it. A lot of a lot of people write about British 17th century history, but maybe not so much other European countries. Um, and I decided I wanted to have in the new novel a woman who does something unusual. And somehow I decided cartography. 
And I thought, oh, well, this will be perfect. I can stay in Spain. You know, surely they were big on map making at that time with, you know, all of their travels and colonies and such. Um, but when I looked into it, actually, that was not the case. Amsterdam was the map making map making capital of the world, in part due to the the wild success of the Dutch East India and Dutch West India companies. So so that 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 determined the setting. And it's it's interesting because it's such a contrast to Spain. I mean, it's the I'm talking about the same time period in both countries, but the cultures are so incredibly different. And in fact, Spain and and what we now think of as the Netherlands and, and Belgium were were at war with Spain for you know 80 years. Um, so it's it's not a surprise they're very different, but it's uh, I, I really like the, enjoyed it researching Amsterdam because the culture is just more varied, more tolerant. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I think certainly what I've seen of Amsterdam as I've recent practice, but and I do love people wonder I do love I do love Spain. But the atmosphere is right. It's in back in those days. So it does come across a bit more cosmopolitan than possibly Madrid mm -hmm. was back in those times as well. So that's why. Mm -hmm. So have you actually been to Amsterdam then? Have you obviously not in 1660 and 1661 and the whole years, but <laughs> that's why. But is it, and it tell us about then? Have you actually been to the country then? Have you? Is it just something that come up in your research? And you go, oh, I can't want to write about that. Well, my husband and I went to Amsterdam in 2015, oh, yeah. but at that time I had I had no idea that I was going to in the future write a book set in Amsterdam mm. and then when I was working on this book of course it was the pandemic and I kept saying to my husband I wish we could go back to Amsterdam so uh, finally we did go back this summer of course the book was already written said as you know sent it to the publisher and everything and I said but I think my next book's going to be in Amsterdam too so <laughs> um, we went and uh I said and you know it was fun because I I took a lot of, of photos of things that would be relevant to, uh, you know, to Amsterdam in the book. Uh, there are a lot of old buildings and such and a lot of history there. And we went to tons of museums. My husband was a wonderful sport about it. And we even went on a walking tour um, with a woman named Eva from Amsterdam Odyssey walking tours. And um, you know, she, it was a 17th century, you know, looking at, at buildings and she talked about it and it was fun because she said, well, here's where the printing house was that is in your book, the, the Johan Blau printing house. And so that was exciting for me. And then yeah. at one point, and I had, I had given her a copy, uh, uh, an early copy of the book. And at one point she, she stopped on a bridge and she said, this is the scene on the cover of your book. So that wow. was really a lot. Of fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I would never have realized because, of course, it's changed quite a bit. And the, the cover um, comes from a painting in the 19th century, but, you know, it, it's still quite different now. So <laughs> nice, great picture, great image again, like it was your first book. Because I think kudos to your publishing this because it's you look at the covers on both those books, they can tell it is you in it. I think it matches your marketing on the, what they've done for you really really well there it does and it gives that very sort of distinctive feel to it definitely with that so how long did your second book take you to write then i presume it didn't take 20 years like your first book is. no this one this one took uh, i'd say a couple of years um but you know i'm not one of those writers who's very disciplined so a disciplined writer would have been much faster. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got your grandchildren to deal with, haven't you, as well? So, like, it's... <laughs> grand, yeah, but blame the grandchildren, or I would That's say right. definitely with that. So, yeah, <laughs> they keep distracting you definitely with that one. But, yeah, no, it's... The book itself is... I said it's... People wondering that stuff, but it's much... It's linear, I think, much more mm -hmm. than the first book is. But there's nothing yes. wrong with that, because it's... It shows um, that you can write both ways, I think. Honestly, that's why. So, like... Do you think doing it in a linear way made it much more smoother for you to do, to do the book? So the first book, I mean, you, like you said already, was like a jigsaw puzzle, really, wasn't it, with the lines between us? And that <laughs> yes. would have honestly done my head in trying to do that right book like that, <laughs> that along with eight years. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It was much easier to write this one. Although, really, I mean, the reason that, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to confess that part of the reason I did the first book that way was because I wasn't sure if I could maintain just one story for a whole novel's worth. So, uh, so I did it the way that I did it. I had a, have a dual timeline. There are different, you know, people, diaries, et cetera. So 
but having done the one book, I thought, okay, I think I think I can do one one story for the whole book. So, no, no, definitely not that one. So, so tell us about the development of the main character. Then, obviously, so people are wondering, obviously, with the main character, the map colorist. Obviously, we're talking about the one young lady, aren't we? Is that I'm going to get yeah. the pronunciation horribly wrong with this? Anik, is it? Have I got that right? It's it's Annika. Annika, well, yes, shit for brains, shit yes, for brains you know, there, I, right? I actually, you know, a friend of a friend actually sat down and did a Zoom with me where he pronounced all the Dutch words, and I, I'm still not going to say all of them correctly. But Annika is is how you say her name. Um, yeah, so just to sort of Amsterdam resulted from my research as a setting. Um, when I started looking into cartography at that time, I came across this, uh, well, first I discovered the Atlas Mayor, which was the largest publication of the 17th century. It's many volumes, huge, huge books. I, when we went to Amsterdam uh, recently, we got to see a whole set. Wow. And so I, I was able to order like a partial, you know, Atlas Mayor from, you know, the internet. And as I was reading, it was talking about people coloring the maps because of they're just, of course, they were just printed in black and white and that women and children would even do this coloring in their home for a minimal price. So I thought, oh, here's, this can be my, my character, Annika. Um, and in the story, as you know, her mother is a map colorist and then she teaches her two children to also color maps. And, and Annika is particularly talented and um, comes to the attention of, of Johan Blau, the publisher, and he um, has her come in and color maps in the, in the publishing house. And then she goes to publish to, to color for uh, a very wealthy collector. So, and, and that was also not um, unheard of. There were um, people, uh, Van Santen was one who, who was still quite famous among map collectors who who colored. He was a colorist. And he would even um, enhance the color, the, the maps with gold or silver because the collectors wanted to show off their wealth uh, to their friends and their fellow collectors. So um, they came to be a thing of real beauty and artistic value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, to say, it's not a field of I knew a lot about for this book and I think one of the strengths what you did with this, Rebecca, was really worked well for me. Was you educated me in this, but you didn't. You know what I mean? I think you showed and you not you told. What's that word right now? You showed, not told, and that oh, yeah. that's <laughs> really clever writing with this book straight away with it because it's it felt rich and it felt like I think certainly because the research and the love that had gone into it and the character, and like you could tell straight away you really enjoyed writing this book. I think you know, straight away with it. So. When you first obviously devised the main character then, and and Annika, did you was she quite different or from the way she eventually ended up being, or was it or was it quite formed quite quickly the way you wanted to write her? Well, she she certainly changed. I'm not a person who has everything planned out ahead at all. Um, I knew that what she wanted to, I knew what she wanted to do, but I didn't know what. Um, quite how she was going to do it. I didn't know what the stumbling blocks were going to be for her. And so when when those sort of became apparent as I was writing along, she does, she does, she did change. I I had, I grew to have a more complex view of her of what she would be willing to do to get her map published. So yeah, it changed the idea of her changed over time. And she she matures. Um in many ways, but, but, you know, you don't want somebody you know, at the beginning, all my characters are really good, nice people. And then, you know, as life happens, just they notice get more the word, but, right. I think that's always a good case, though, Rebecca, <laughs> there, definitely. Cause they do like it. I think a half the art of good writing novels is like, you start off as beautiful, innocent people. And you just drag them through the mincer, don't you? And by the end of it, yeah. just, that's all I'm going to say. Right, straight away with that. So. Yeah. No, I'm definitely with that. So out of interest, I'm just going to be a bit facetious today. I mean, uh, we got. I had a great time with you last time we did this. I'm going to ask you a couple of funny questions anyway. But one I want to know, first of all, is obviously with them, obviously these books have been set in roughly the same time zone. 
How do you reckon yeah. the main characters would have interacted with each other? Hmm. I think that um, Julia, the, the main character from, from that period in, in the first novel, would have admired Annika's ambition and envied the level of freedom that she has. <laughs> Um, because, it, you know, of course, women didn't have it easy in Amsterdam at that time, but they had much more freedom. And, uh, you know, she also, I think, would have envied the, you know, that that Annika has her mother present and she has a brother and, you know, that she knows love her. And, um, yeah, Annika, I think, would have felt sorry for Julia, as as we kind of all do when we're reading, when we're reading the novel because of what happens to her though she then finds her strength. So um, in the end, they both faced their challenges, I think, and uh, came out stronger for it. But it was a lot easier for Annika to do in the society that she was in. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, definitely that one. So it's, I, I, I asked that question because you want to know this, but Amanda, my wife, she's wrote a number of series herself, or she doesn't really do novels now. But I once challenged her, and she did a beautiful job on it, to actually do a bit of flash fiction where the three main characters from a three main series all met up in a coffee shop for a coffee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's why you just get them like are getting chatting away about their lives then basically. And it's like it's like it's just yeah. always it's always a good challenge to see how your characters will react to the other ones, won't yeah. they? So and stuff like that. So yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, are you still involved in your book clubs nowadays? I know you've been in the same book club, weren't you, for decades last time we spoke a couple of years ago? Yes. Yes, I'm still in the same book club. And I, I was surprised. I went the other night, We just Thursday night, um, we had a meeting and uh, one of the people already had my book and it's not supposed to wow. be out until tomorrow. Yeah, but she no, said people... she ordered it and the bookshop got it and so she went and picked it up. So that was that was fun. <laughs> it's impressive. People wonder the date, obviously, like I said, Rebecca, your books are out on the 19th of September, isn't it, Rebecca? I seem to recall. Yes. It's the 18th today, but this will be out, like I said, be a couple of weeks' oh. time, so it's not that much more yes. in the future. But like I said, it yes. shows you sometimes, doesn't it, with, I've had it before when I've ordered books, and Amazon sometimes deliver them to you a day or two before, and you were sat there thinking, I don't believe you've yes. done this. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm, what sort of publicity have you got planned for this time then are you going to do any readings for this book Rebecca or I'm sorry are you going to be doing, doing any readings to promote the book or anything or oh um tomorrow I'm going to be on a radio show called Joy on Paper in the morning um it'll be just a short interview and then um I'm going to do a discussion tomorrow again September 19th um at four with uh, a woman who runs a big group called book movement and they have book their four book club people. So I'm going to do that. And then not until October 19th, do I have a live event at a, a local small bookstore here. That's kind of mainly for family and friends to oh, <laughs> celebrate really, with me. Brilliant. Well, let's, let's hope it goes really well for you now and I'm sure it will. So now I've got to ask you, obviously, before we go into what happens, what you're doing next, because I know we've already hinted at another book, but I asked you last time, and I'm going to ask you the same question today because I'm cruel <laughs> in a nice way. I asked you last time we spoke, in an ideal world, who would be your main character in your last book? If you if this came to a film, who would you like to be your main character? Which actress would you like playing on your, on your second book? Oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> I, should, oh, no. I, should have, I should have listened to that again, also, Andy. And, <laughs> so I would remember. Um, I, I wouldn't do this anyway, you, Rebecca. But I love you so much. I've always lost track where I thought, yeah. <laughs> <We had a lot. laughs> I mean, I do have an idea of an actress, but I can't remember her name. She's a young, young woman. She's Irish and she's gotten an Academy Award before. But yeah, I don't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> That's best. Just keep it vague. Mostly what I watch, tend to watch are, are mostly what I tend to watch are British mystery series, it seems like. <laughs> no, I've fair play. Definitely good luck with that. So okay, let's ask you, let's talk about what happens and what you're doing next then. Because you already hinted the third book's also going to be in Amsterdam as well. So what can you reveal about the third book? 
Not a lot because I don't know a lot yet, but um, I'm going to try my hand at a mystery the next time oh. because I love mysteries. I, I read tons of mysteries, and I but I was too intimidated to to try it before. So now that I have two books, I think well, I'm going to give it a try. So I've been you know reading some books and about mis writing mystery, and uh, it's going to be in Amsterdam again. And I, I it's going to uh, it'll be a young woman will be the protagonist, and it mm -hmm. will be set in the world of book printing or or book selling which um was very big at the time and um Johan Blau who who published the Atlas Mayor and and was best known for maps also published other books so but it won't be with him be some, with someone else but I'm I'm making my way through a very slow read but very dense read right now called the bookshop of the world amsterdam in the 17th century so um it's going to take place in that world it'll be it'll be a murder mystery because if it's there's not a murder it's not a real mystery in my view so uh, mm -hmm. and the young woman i think may may work for um there were quite a number of um what we now think of as newspapers um at the time and one uh who who one that's mentioned extremely briefly in in the the map colorist uh, was a woman who, with her partner, ran a newspaper. So maybe she's going to be maybe the young woman will work for that newspaper, and the older woman will be sort of her mentor. And it's not like there was investigative journalism at the time, really. But I some have to somehow have to figure out how it's going to be that the young woman can ask enough questions to solve the mystery. So that's about as far as I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's enough to tease us along, definitely, with that one. So hopefully it won't take you 20 years to write this book, Rebecca, anyway. So. Right. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I, I probably never would make it see the light. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I know he said, he, he said it, this, obviously, the book, your new book now, that took you quite a bit quicker to write anyway. So, fingers crossed this yeah. one, definitely. So, okay, yeah. well, we're going to give you a time to read that extract this in the second half anyway. So, obviously, and where can people get hold of your book, first of all, then? Pretty much anywhere um, in the U.S., anywhere you buy books. You can get it online. You can order at your local bookshop. Um I noticed in the UK, I'm not as sure. Although I did when we were, uh, I, I know that they know that Waterstone has it on their website. Um, I don't know if they have any hard copies in in their stores. But when we were in Amsterdam, I contacted the Waterstone um, store there, and they said they're going to carry my book. So I'm oh, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant! Well, that's a great idea. When you get your third book, I need to remind them. Oh, you remember me? You did a book a couple of years <laughs> yeah. ago. Here's the third one. It's also setting up to that one as well. Yeah, <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Uh, if people read up more about you, Rebecca, where do you recommend they go? Lastly? More about me? Yeah, but you, but more about you, yes. yes. Um, they can go to my, my website, rebeccadeharling.com. Uh, should I spell that? <laughs> I can I can put it I can put it on the write up so as I will okay. so don't worry about that Rebecca so that it was okay. like it, like I said people it's a great book this one really is and it was it was interesting really to see the change in the writer's style in this to a degree but no but mm -hmm. it's still very Rebecca so I absolutely adored it so thank you Rebecca thank you. so right okay guys and girls we'll wrap up part one we shall be back in two shakes of dice and you can have a little bit of Rebecca's book see you on two minutes.